Good morning, everybody. Dennis Engelbrecht with the Family Business Institute, digging deeper. Today, I want to talk about delegation. For any manager or leader, delegation is a critically import, important skill. Because if you can't delegate, you end up doing a lot of low value tasks that take up your time and take up your day. And oftentimes those come at the expense of the more important tasks. So I uh, read a book quite a while ago called Time is Money. And, and in that, uh, they talked about doing $100 an hour work, $1,000 an hour work, even $100,000 an hour work. So uh, that may sound bizarre, you know, that you could, you know, do $100,000 worth of work in an hour. But think about it, if, if, if you had a meeting with a client and you secured a large contract, uh, it could be worth millions of dollars, just that one single meeting. So certainly it is possible to do $100,000 an hour work. But in order to do that, you have to make sure that you're not doing the five, 10 and $15 an hour work uh, that you may have within your company. So the, the challenge for, for many people with this is they give a job, they have some experience, they, they've given jobs to people and they come back unsatisfactory. And then they have to do it themselves or do it over again or pour over the work that the other person does, has done so carefully that they're really being redundant and, and doing it again. Uh, so another issue is trusting. You know, sometimes folks just have difficulty trusting others with something uh, that it'll get done right or get it done the way they expect it to be done. And therefore, they have difficulty letting go and end up doing those lower level tasks uh, that they really shouldn't be doing. And, you know, if you had to summarize this problem, uh, the problem uh, comes with something I, I used to call gopher delegation. Gopher delegation is when you just ask somebody to go for this, go for that, go do this, go do that. And it, it sort of wrote tasks and, and go and get this and do that. And the problem with gopher delegation is there's no guidance or purpose to it. So each time you ask somebody to go do something for you, uh, they don't learn enough or know enough to catch the nuances or even to do it on their own the next time or to do it before you ask for it the next time. So the opposite of this or the answer to your problem in delegation is something we call stewardship delegation. In stewardship delegation, you, whoever's helping you or you're delegating something to, you try to envision or vision the end result together. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm hoping for. And, and you may think of some rote tasks where that just sounds crazy, but even on the rote task, you know, it, for example, if you're asking for copies, you know, do I want them two-sided, stapled, you know, uh, you know, in a booklet, all of these other things, color, black and white. Well, there's a million questions and, and if the person you're giving it to doesn't know what you want, you're very unlikely to get what you want. So envision that end result together and make sure that they understand what you're looking for, what it's gonna be used for, and, and then they'll have a better chance to deliver exactly what you want. You have to be able to give responsibility, but as importantly is give authority. So if you give responsibility with authority, then you find the person you gave the task to is oftentimes unable to complete the task fully because they don't have the authority to really carry it through to its end point. So make sure you're always giving authority with responsibility. The next thing is to make sure you're committing the resources necessary. And I've seen this quite a bit we, we give a task, but we don't give a person the time, the credit card, uh, the money, the budget, uh, the team, uh, whatever they need to actually get it done. And then, of course, we're disappointed in the results and we really should be disappointed in ourselves because we, we didn't give them what was necessary to get the result. 
The next thing is to apply accountability. And with that accountability comes coaching. And you know, when I talk about accountability, you shouldn't think of that as a downward thing, but check in with the person who's doing something for you, check along the way, make sure they're online with the tasks that you're giving them, the timeline you've given them, make sure they're getting a good start. And that's especially important because if you let a person go down the wrong fork in the road too long, then they've wasted their time and you won't get your result that you want or the result in the time that you want. So you do have to apply accountability, accountability and coaching in your stewardship delegation. You can't just you know, brush your hands and expect it to be done. And then finally, make sure the consequences are understood. And again, I'm not thinking about this in a negative way, but you know, the consequences might be, well, if you, if you bring back this great presentation, we might be able to get the job or we might be able to turn the one person on the panel who could vote against us in our favor if we can really knock this one out of the park. That would be an example of the consequences and knowing them. And, and finally, you know, one of the biggest challenges we have in stewardship delegation is trust. You have to be able to trust that somebody else can do the job. Otherwise, you're, you're sort of doomed to end up doing them all yourselves. And that's not how you, what you want to be more effective. That's not what you want to be able to advance your leadership. You know, you have to be able to delegate and to do that, you have to be able to give trust to the person that's gonna do the job for you. So again, just take a look at your own self, uh, how well you are delegating, how well uh, or how much that might be uh, helping or inhibiting your growth in leadership. So digging deeper, thanks again for tuning in.